Hello everyone, thank you for joining me for another edition of Painting of the Week. And this week we're going to be talking about Francisco de Goya's 3rd of May. I think this is a pretty familiar painting. This was painted in 1814, and the scene that is depicted here, we're commemorating the Spanish resistance to the invasion of Napoleon's troops, which occurred in 1808. That was part of the Peninsular War, one of the, the many Napoleonic wars that occurred in Europe during the early 19th century. And the kind of art historian catchphrase that is usually linked with this painting is that it's perhaps the first modern revolution painting. And we've looked at other paintings where revolution has been a theme. Uh, Eugène de la Croix's Liberty Leading the People jumps to mind, uh, the French Revolution. So Goya, of course, being Spanish, there's going to be a clear bias in this painting, which is obviously that the Spanish are the victims and the French are the aggressors. The, the way that we can immediately kind of establish that dynamic is based on the fact, I think, we cannot see the faces of any of the French soldiers, whereas the faces of the Spanish, the, the, you know, the patriots, are very clear to the viewer, and we can definitely associate some, some emotion with the types of expressions that we see here. So as a viewer, I'm thinking, okay, I can immediately sympathize with the emotion that I see in, in the Spanish, whereas the French are kind of like these machines. They don't have any facial expressions that are visible to me as the viewer, and I don't really form any sort of intimate connection or understanding of them. And in, speaking of machines, the geometry, I think, of these soldiers is very important here. The gun and their, and their bodies form this kind of repeated angle that we see that follows along this line of soldiers, and they're all in this very straight line. It's very rectilinear, very ordered. So let's talk more about this central figure. He has his arms raised above his head. He's on his knees as if he's, you know, almost begging. And this pose, I think, is very interesting. This is something that's definitely been discussed before by, by other art historians, is that this pose is kind of reminiscent of a crucifix, the way the hands are extended above the head. And if you look closely, this might be difficult to see, we can also see evidence of a stigmata, or a stigma. While I think it's definitely safe to say that Goya is playing with a sort of religious motif here, I don't think you want to overemphasize that too much because there's other indications in the sort of ambiance of this painting that um, kind of lead us in other directions, and I'll talk about that a little bit later on. Kind of continuing along that same sort of religious theme, we can see some individuals here have their hands folded in prayer, this person is probably, based on that really attractive haircut, he's probably a monk. We have this uh, like light lantern type thing here on the ground, and you can see that the way that the light is emitted, it's illuminating the Spanish. So it's kind of like they're on a, almost like I think like a stage or something here. And we have this kind of interesting geological artifact here. I'm not exactly sure what this is supposed to be, but there's some kind of mound of like dirt or, or, or a wall here which gives the impression that the Spanish are, are they're boxed in, they're completely trapped, there's no way that they can escape. And then another thing, just briefly, that I feel like I have to mention is that the color of the central figure's uh, yellow pants there, along with the blood that we see on the ground, is, is also reminiscent of the Spanish flag. So once again, reinforcing that theme of patriotism. I want to wrap this up by talking a little bit more about how Goya is really breaking with tradition here, and that's in the sense that the men here, these, these Spanish resistors, are not really depicted as heroes, like we would traditionally think of in, in a history painting that's commemorating some sort of, you know, event in which men of virtue demonstrated their, their heroism. These men are kind of depicted almost as kind of cowardly, and the central figure here is no one person in particular. The, there's a very kind of anonymous sense of the violence here, and this aura of martyrdom is absent, and that's why I said I don't really think that the whole Christ-like association that we can draw from the the position of that main central figure's body is something we want to push too much, because we don't get the sense that we do in those medieval religious paintings of, of a martyr here as much as we do just someone who was kind of in the wrong place at the wrong time. So the viewer ends up really lacking that sort of catharsis, or the sense of, of, of loss that we can get that we usually associate with the, the death of a truly virtuous person. So I get the sense that Goya is trying to explore here, maybe uh, for the first time, the, the sort of anonymity of violence that is associated with, with battle or with the casualties of, of, of war. So next time we come in here, next week, we're going to look at a, a very similar painting 
by Manet, similar in terms of both theme and artistic style that was inspired by Goya's Third of May, and we'll kind of compare and contrast. So we'll see you next week.